Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Chris Green, your Virtual Assistant Director, bringing you something very, very cool and unique tonight. So a little background on me and why I chose this topic. As I grew up in the church, I was uh, in Southern Baptist uh, churches my entire life. I got to high school and I was involved in a very large church in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina called Hickory Grove Baptist Church. Had a full <laughs> choir and orchestra every single Sunday. So I got to play trumpet for two services and, and I, I loved it. As I moved to other churches and, and throughout my life, I kept connecting to music as the, the way that I enjoyed worshiping. It's the way that I felt close in my religion and my faith. I actually went to a Southern Baptist University, Gardner Webb, in North Carolina and got my degree in music composition, minor in theater, you know, my backup plan. Uh, but while at Gardner Webb, I was really introduced to a lot of contemporary Christian music. I had people who went into songwriting in Nashville, people who were connected uh, as performers and tour managers and just so many different things within this world. And we talk a lot about how to make your band better, how to make your program better, but let's face it, as a band director, people in your program, or as a choir director, orchestra director, they're not in there to become the next band director. There's a few of them, but there may be some really talented people who could be in, in the performing side, on the background side, stage management. There's so many different things that you can learn and do. So I worked with this wonderful person a few weeks ago at a big mass band event at one of the bowl games. And as we started talking, I realized that she's just part of this wonderful Christian duo of musicians who I, you know, fair warning, I did download all their music over the past week and I've been listening to it like fangirling in the car. Uh, they have a wonderful sound. I'm very excited to introduce you to Corey and Kelly. Hi. So welcome ladies. Hi everybody. All right, so uh, let's start off Corey. Since you're the newest one to me, I haven't met you in person yet this time tonight. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and, and what, what are you doing? Okay, so I grew up in Bay County, Panama City. I was born and raised here. Um, family's really, really important to us. I, My siblings and I um, grew up with lots of cousins. So we had this unspoken rule. We're all going to have kids around the same time so all of us can recreate that. So we do. We did. My brother lives around the street from my mama. We live two blocks from her. My sister is the furthest one, and she's 20 minutes up the road. Um, I have been in ministry working at my church for over just about 10 years. I just quit and Christmas day was my last day. And I'm just really excited for Kelly and I to kind of, a, God is really clearing a lot of the other distractions out of the way for us to be able to really, you know, make this our full-time, full-time job, you know, to be able to really enjoy and just embrace everything God has for us. So yeah, lots of changes. We start, started homeschooling our kids this year. Just to, we feel the Lord's leading and we're lots of anticipation about what's to come. Oh, very cool. All right, Kelly, your formal introduction, please. <laughs> so I live in Hazelhurst, Georgia, and I met Corey in Panama City. My husband is from Panama City. And we met through our worship team um, after Hurricane Michael hit in 2018. Um, it pretty much destroyed everything. So we moved back home to my hometown of Hazelhurst. My husband is the band director here, and I taught um, elementary education, music education for about three years. And I just quit that. Um, this past May was the end of that era. So I now have my own music school. So I teach piano lessons out of my home. So we also work on songwriting. Um, I have little types, kindergarten and pre-K. Pre and so I teach uh, music fundamentals there. And then, yeah, Corey and Kelly. And I love that it gives me the freedom to be able to travel with Corey without having to put in a substitute, without having to have lesson plans, you know, all this stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, after spending uh, 10 years in Texas as a high school band director and working myself to death, I loved what I did. I loved the kids. I loved the programs. I loved the growth. It was so cool seeing the students grow after you know, four years of being in the program. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't sustain it anymore, and now I work for myself. I'm basically a deconstructed band director, and I everything I do is something I enjoy doing. Yep. So I really hear you speaking that, and I'm excited for you because I know what that made a difference in my life, personally, <laughs> professionally, and otherwise. <laughs> yes. Uh, so definitely wish you the best there. So Thank let's see. You. you guys have been together. You've known each other for a while, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. We've been friends for gosh, years. I think we started singing together at church. Kelly, was it 2010? I think it, well, yeah, because we got married, with, my husband and I got married in 07. Mm -hmm. And then, so we probably met a year or two after that. Yeah, I, my husband and I started going to Forest Park. We were married a year. And so that we got married 2009. So it had to have been somewhere between 2010, 2011. 
And I'm so thankful for those first years because there was not any ministry. It was just us goofing off at praise team practice and really forming a, a relationship and a friendship. Mm -hmm. And I believe that God really knew what he was doing with that. It has really translated in our ministry that that foundation of true friendship. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to do business too. But Kelly and I joke, we, we pray over our ministry like we would a, a marriage. You know, we've made a vow. We wrote, we've made this business. We are committing to a lifetime or as long as the Lord will give us of ministry. And sometimes that, anyway, we try to really pray protection over that. <laughs> well, that's awesome. So what would change from being in this praise group and you're working together, you're, you're, you're there for the same reasons, you're doing the same thing. What was that spark that said, you know what, we can do something. Let's <laughs> Not here. us. Yeah. <laughs> Not me and Kelly. <laughs> we were yeah. scared. We got asked um, in 2014 to sort of lead a women's retreat. It was the women's, the precious ladies at Forest Park. Um, they were like, hey, I know y'all haven't branched off on your own before. Will you lead worship for us on this retreat? And so oh. we were like, ah, okay. We've never done anything like this by ourselves before, but sure. So on the way up there, we kind of brainstormed because we knew, we felt we had something special. When we sang together and our harmonies, I mean, it was like nothing else. It's mm -hmm. hard to find that with anybody, you know? Mm -hmm. and so we just prayed on the way up there. We were like, okay, God, what are you doing? This is kind of cool. Um, if you want us to make something out of this, you're going to have to like show up in some sort of way and let us know. And so we were kind of brainstorming different names on the way up there and we, the first part of it, we said we because of wood. And then my last name of stop you. We're like, OK, well, that makes we. But we need we something. Um, and so we prayed about it. And long story short, God gave us both the name anointed separately. And so when we came right. together, um, we were like, what about anointed? And so Corey was like, God told me that name. And so we anointed then became our name. A couple of years later, um, we changed it to Corey and Kelly because we, like we had said before, we didn't want to hide behind a name. And also we didn't want maybe a non-believer to listen to our music and turn that on well, and see we anointed and say, oh, this is Christian. Let me change something else. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. so we went with Corey and Kelly. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome. Okay. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. I had some. I, I was going somewhere. I, your face. I, like, away. Oh, I can't help you. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll tell you when I, when I first was introduced to you know, what I would call contemporary Christian music. Mm -hmm. Now, praise and worship stuff that was big time in our church, and obviously we had our, our the old spiritual hymns and things that have been passed down generation to generation. Mm -hmm. And every church has their own little pocket of stuff. Um, but I've heard a lot of pop music just changing the lyrics and things to, you know, read, write it for a Christian message. And then there's a few Christian bands that came out and they were doing their own unique sound. And I always gravitated to that. I'm like, well, that's cool because you can have a message and your own sound. Absolutely. And so in my sleuthing skills through all your, your repertoire, I found very little covers. It's mostly stuff you guys have written. So how did that component come about? Because that's in itself very few performers are writing their own music and i'm looking at who's written and it's got both their names on most of the things <laughs> so I'm like okay there's a collaboration on another level here so tell us a little bit about oh, that kelly is definitely the more natural writer um she sets us apart but it's so funny because as much as i want to say it's Kelly's so smart. It's so sweet because Kelly's so humble and she'll say, it wasn't me. I just prayed. But tell them a little bit about the our first original song, Kelly. So when we first started, we were singing, you know, kind of the praise team music together. Mm -hmm. We would do a couple of videos. I think Toby Mac shared our first cover together that we mm -hmm. did. Um, but we knew that we needed to do our own stuff. And so I honestly had not, I'd written one song and I thought it was kind of cheesy in the past. So I said, all right, God, you're going to have to like help us out. You're going to have to send us words because I don't know where to start. We don't know where to start. And so that night, um, <clears throat> this, the song started coming to me. Um, it ended up being our very first single, Take Me Back to Church. Um, it was written within maybe like two or three days. And basically it came from just our experiences or my own experience um, growing up in a little country church and how that dynamic has sort of changed. Or maybe somebody who originally went to a little country church, maybe straight away later in life and they don't know 
how to get back into church. Maybe they feel that tugging and they don't know because, you know, the dynamics have changed. You have mega churches, you have um, churches in a barn. I mean, you, you have all these options out there. Um, and so the basis of that song was it doesn't matter what season of life or where you are in life. It's always OK to jump back into church just as you are. You don't have to come all fully decked out. You don't have to look the part. Um, God just wants you just as you are. And so getting back to the roots of that is kind of where our first single, Take Me Back to Church, came from. And it's so funny because no matter how many songs we've written since then, that's <laughs> what everybody gravitates towards all over the world. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, that's why I picked it for the name of this, because it was one of <laughs> I don't think it was the first one I heard, but I was looking through the names. Mm -hmm. That's so perfect because, uh, as I know you guys are aware, and you kind of alluded to it as well, a lot of people move away from church yeah. for various reasons. And religion itself or faith or mm -hmm. you know, I'm just spiritual now or whatever they're talking about. But there is a disconnect between what you grow up with and what you do as an adult. Yeah. And some of us follow the same path. Some of us make different choices. Some of us go all over the place and then decide. Now is the time to reconnect to that. So that really spoke to me. I'm not sure if it's a lyric from this song or another one, but you just said, just as you are. And there's a lyric about when just as I am was the ultra call. Mm -hmm. Growing yep. up Southern Baptist, that was definitely one that you heard. You oh, know, yeah. All the, seven the, verses the, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to hear that. <laughs> that yeah. Song. And actually, we kind of snuck in a little, almost kind of a play on an instrumental of that during that <laughs> instrumental break. That was kind of the whole oh, yeah. thought process of that. I mean, I'm going to say, because, you know, music composition. So I, I call those things that I <laughs> love those things. I'm always the person that, well, I'll put it this way. My senior project in college was a 17-minute Gloria based on angles we have heard on high. Wow. So I, every way possible I could. And, you know, I love that kind of stuff because it's, awesome. it's cerebral. It's the, mm -hmm. oh, this like feels familiar. Yes. <laughs> right. You talk about taking someone back to church and you want to you know, relive those feelings, those things that made you connect in the first place. Yeah. I mean, I know when you're a young kid and you're sitting in, in church listening to these old people just saying a bunch of things and these and thous, you're like, I don't I just yeah. like color. <laughs> so if you're able to connect to something, for me, it was music. It was mm -hmm. music has always been a connecting thing for me. And it, it brought me out of my shell and gave me purpose to my life. And I've continuously been blessed to still be in performing arts for all these years, even though the path may have changed. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still have those strong connections to church. And what that means today looks different than it did five years ago or 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I really, I really, really, really appreciate what you guys are doing. But you know, most importantly, and what I want people to take away from this, and when we get to the end and talk about your web page and things, is to go to listen to these ladies. Um, you can tell <clears throat> there's, there's, power in the message uh there's power in your voices so it's not just we're singing things we're not just mm -hmm. adding the name jesus and god to, to everything but you know you're telling stories through music which to me is always the most important mm -hmm. and um i've always said i can appreciate any style of music when there's talent there but when there's passion you know i always use the, the reference to the canadian brass mm -hmm. they're a wonderful world-renowned perfect brass ensemble for years they were flatlined. It felt like they were playing just the right music and that was it. Then you have Empire Brass, the other groups come out and they want well, to do some arrangements and unique. They started yeah. adding more stuff. And all of a sudden, now I'm excited. Well, now mm -hmm. the Canadian Brass are doing the same thing that everyone else was you know, building off of them. So when I listened to your music, I really felt the message was coming across and the words sunk in and I wanted to hear more and more and more. So thankfully I downloaded everything so I didn't have to wait. I could go and <laughs> So well, it's really um, important to Kelly and I that we are authentic. Mm -hmm. That is like really, really part of our, um, the DNA of our ministry, because we also recognize like there's, there's church hurt. I mean, I think if you went to any church, you could pass the mic around and they can talk about like real things and how that can limit you and your, you know, desire to give to a church and you get resentful of the decisions being made. But really what's so important to Kelly and I is that, well, you're not coming to church to be served. Mm -hmm. And I think that has really shifted and church culture has shifted over the years. It's like a buffet. Like Kelly was saying, you can, mm -hmm. it's a la carte. You can, if you don't like this, just go down the road in here. And there we've lost a sense of loyalty for our church. We've, we've lost a sense of community. Um, and not every church, you know, we're yeah. both blessed to have very, very um, community driven, very close churches, but it's such a shame because if you have not experienced that, I can understand why 
Yeah. You would be resentful to go in the church. And that's so important, like I said, for us to come in and be like, real, like we're not putting up false narratives. Mm -hmm. Life sucks sometimes, you know, like life's hard this side of heaven. And I think that sometimes Christians can say, well, you just don't have enough faith. You should just believe harder. No, no, that's a lie. It's just, we're this side of heaven. It's where we live in a broken world. So if we can encourage somebody to get with other people and have community, that's, that's the biggest takeaway. So I'm so thankful that that translated. When you I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I love it. I, that reminds me of a story. There's a, a church that meets in the opera house here in St. Pete. And when I was working for the opera, we kind of helped get the them in because we never rehearsed during the church hours. Mm -hmm. So I thought, it's perfect. Why not host a church? Well, they were doing an outside service uh, for Easter. And when the public parts, they got the permits and everything else. Okay, like, hey, we're just going to take advantage and be out here. And a friend that I've known for years, uh, is like, well, I, I'm not religious anymore. And I thought, you know, why not? When they mentioned church hurt me, his, his own story of why that happened. I'm like, well, you know what? We're going to be Easter Sunday. We're going to be at the church service. We're just going to hang out in the park. And he's come by and say hi. Mm -hmm. And now it's been two years later. And he's a huge member of the church. He's refound his faith. He needed to find that sense of community and just yeah. happened to be that particular type. So, you know, was that a message being sent through me to make sure he was there? Or was it just right place, right time, whatever it is, but this person got what they needed. Yes. Situation. So, um, and we have a message from someone who, who watches this from Venezuela saying, can these talented singers give us a little song? I know you guys are in separate <laughs> places, so I'm not going to ask you to, to do that. Because <laughs> flag, horrific, I know. Yeah, I'd probably be a little delayed, but man, we so would if we were together. I know. So, you know, that just means we have to have another one of these where you guys are together. That's uh, right. And we'll talk about your, your website and things here in a minute, too. And you've had some things that are online people can see and mm -hmm. listen to and experience. So, uh, for Dan, just hang on for a few minutes. I'll get the link <laughs> and show you. You'll be, be just fine. Uh, so, what made you think that music would be a career through the church? What, what kind of clicked and said, okay, we're doing our day jobs and whatever else, whatever else. But let's refocus this into, into something different. Gosh. Well, for me, it took a long time. Like I'm very type A. I like a plan. I like control. I always dreamed of the white picket fence and just having things in order. Um, and Kelly is so much more vibrant and says things like, who cares what, if we don't have any money, let's just go ahead. <laughs> so, you know, God, it, that I know it used to be, I think we would get there's heads a bit and be like, well, crap. I mean, you know, is this going to work? We're so different. And instead of that, it's like been we just love one, one another. We love the, the things each of us bring to the table. Um, but it, it took a long time for, I think, both of us to realize the potential that we really could have. Um, I, I tell Kelly this all the time. I, I love singing. I know I have a pretty voice. Kelly has a beautiful voice. But that's not what's it's it's when we come together that's so magical and important and, and really feels anointed and the play off of one another. We both say, like, I don't want to do this without her. It would not be fun. You no. want to get somebody up there with you. Mm -hmm. And Kelly and my mom both were, so, I mean, huge supporters of us from a very young age, really encouraged us both to sing. And I think my mom would have driven me across the country if I said I would go audition for whatever. And I just never had any desire until I met Kelly, really. So we talked been my about biggest it. What, what was the breakthrough that we had? We, we talked about our spiritual gifts and how, you know, because... I'm, I have a really big spiritual gift in faith. So if I believe the Lord has a thing, like I don't even care. I'm just going to trust that that's going to be fulfilled. Oh. I don't look at all the other details. <laughs> and then, and and then what was yours? Mine's discernment. And so <laughs> I'm very cautious when we make decisions. I'm like, well, let's really like take a step back and really pray and analyze the situation. And I think we both thought that though we would get frustrated with those. Like I can remember this was really a recent revelation that Kelly and I've had where I would just seem grumpy and she would just seem like, oh, well, you got your head in the clouds, Kelly, like come back down to reality. And instead of that, that has been what has made this whole thing happen. It, it's we've had used very good wisdom and discernment to not just like dive in stuff. Um, but we also I, I, I would not be here right now had Kelly not really believed and encouraged us. And that I mean, that gets inspiring. It's a, it's addictive when you, when someone yeah. gets really fired up, you get fired up. And so I think that really the last couple of years after the hurricane, we really, we were like, okay, you know what? Like the hurricane was 2018. I think we really were afraid that would end us mm -hmm. when she moved. That's been the biggest blessing. Um, God has really like divided us to build us up. 
And we know when we come back together, it's going to be a mighty thing. Every, tr every trip we take on, if I'm tattling on, on us a little bit more often than not, we, because we're separated, we don't have a lot of time to practice that never messes us up. The Lord has just been so faithful to have us remember all the things we do together. So it's been really cool. But don't it's, tell our moms. <laughs> no, yeah, no, right? <laughs> no, but like we live five hours away from each other. And so normally any other person would say, well, this isn't going to work. How do we continue a business? How do we a, a music career when we're not together? And so, yeah, like you said, God has just provided. It's crazy. We just had to put our trust in him and say, all right, well, if this is what you want us to do, then you're going to have to make it work. That's pretty much what we have to do you know and so yeah we've made our time together more intentional mm -hmm. um we've had friends all over the country that says hey you can leave your car here while y'all go to nashville or you know our families i'm back home with my family whereas if i was in panama city we'd really have nobody to watch our kids if we were to go off because nick's doing band directing you know so mm -hmm. all of our families i mean it, it takes our our whole entire family yep to make this work. And so we're so appreciative of them and our friends and our church families and everything else that helps us out. Well, Tay, listening to the, I wrote down three things as we're going because they were universal to, to music business. Support, so you talked about supporting each other, family support, uh, the, the areas, the church, all the things that said, hey, you can do this. We all need that regardless of what the field is. Lifting each other up and having balance. So it, it's okay to have, you know, the dreamer and the realist, uh, the person who's really good with numbers or really good with creative ideas or, you know, whatever that falls into. Um, and we hear, we, all you have to do is turn on any music biopic and you can watch when that star hits that one point and the downfall happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But with the right people around, the right support, the right network, mm -hmm. it can bounce back even better. And let's face it, if you don't have those down times, are you really going to appreciate the really good times? Bingo. Mm -hmm. So it, that life balance in there, it's really easy to get discouraged. And I, th I think a lot of people who've tuned into this and have written me after various podcasts over the, the last two years have been doing this have just said, it gets really discouraging. There's no one here telling me to keep going. Yeah. Well, there always is somebody. You just have to find it. Mm -hmm. We all we all need our, our community. We all need our church, whatever that means for you. Is, is it a physical <laughs> building? Is it the religion? Is it faith? Is it family? Whatever it is, we mm -hmm. all need that support system. And I think that's why, you know, when I, when I was listening to take me back to church, it made so much sense, not just from a religious point of view, but just as a life point of view, mm -hmm. um, we build ourselves up on this foundation of how to get better. And sometimes we got to go back to the roots and say, Hey, this is bigger than me. Mm -hmm. uh, who's here to support? What do I need? How can I move on to the, to the next thing? Mm -hmm. So uh, just know that while you're, getting a very specific message, that message of love and support is universal underneath that. So even if you're someone who's not religious listening to this, mm -hmm. it's the same idea. Uh, and hopefully you do find your path back into a way of spirituality or, or religion or faith or you know whatever that means for you, because I, I think we all need that. We all need to believe in something higher than ourselves. Absolutely. Um, exactly. We call it different things, but... <laughs> It is what it is. <laughs> All right, well, let me share your, your website because I was I played around this a lot earlier. Let me see if I can share the screen here. So for anyone who's interested in finding out more about these lovely ladies, it's very easy. It's coreyandkelly.com. And this is the first thing that I saw. I was like, okay, lift my hands. And I saw, okay, went over to iTunes and started downloading. <laughs> very, very glad that I had. So let's talk, talk a little about your, your new single that you, you mentioned a little bit before uh, the broadcast, Kelly. Talk about mm -hmm. the new single. So Lift My Hands, um, Corey wrote uh, with a, in a group session. Um, it was me, Corey, and Ben Calhoun of Citizen Way. It was about, what, 2016? I think so, yeah. So do you want to tell a little bit about the inspiration behind it? Sure. I had a journal. In fact, I have it right here beside me. I had, my mom got me this journal and my husband had, um, he's an IT, he does contract work through IT. Um, or I'm sorry, he does IT through contract anyway. And if you've ever been in the contract world, um, you can lose your job like tomorrow. And so, but you just have to crawl your way to the top. And so right before we went, he had lost his job. And this was like, we had nothing in the bank. Um, and so we were really having to like seriously grocery shop at mama's house. Our kids were little. Um, it's obviously embarrassing. You feel like you should have your crap together by this point. And you're, you know, you've been married a while. 
and it was just a feeling of total defeat. Um, and so I wrote some thoughts down and I was like, you know what, God, despite everything, you are going to be faithful in my life. And I can't be resentful of these circumstances because these circumstances you can use to bring yourself glory, to bring others to you. And so what can we do? All we're going to do is trust you and lift our hands. And so we wrote it with Ben Calhoun and it wasn't even our favorite song. We wrote three songs that day. And this one has, it's just so funny the way that God works because this wouldn't have been probably one that we would have pushed, but it is obviously now one of our favorites because first of all, it's upbeat and fun. But second of all, it's, it's such truth. Things are going to happen. All God calls us to have is a willing heart and an obedient spirit to just say, okay, use it, Lord. Like I'm going to lift it like a child. Right. <clears throat> So yeah, it's Corey brags on me about songwriting, but she got it in her too. So. <laughs> Thanks, Kel. So also on this website you have where you can see where you guys are going to perform live. I know you've done some things on Facebook and things as well. So what is your Facebook handle uh, for your business page so people can find you for that? It is Corey and Kelly and that's C-O-R-I and you have to spell out and A-N-D and then K-E-L-L-Y. And you've got a gig coming up in New Mexico. That's not close to Georgia. I know. <laughs> so excited about that one. It's a gala. Sounds like a lot of fun. We've been contacting with the people. It's actually a Christian Academy over there in Hobbs, New Mexico. And um, they're super excited. And, and we're super excited to visit. I don't think either one of us has ever been over there. <laughs> nope. So cool. But we'll go anywhere. I we'll know. Anywhere. Awesome. And... There's some videos right here on your page. So Fernando, who was just asking for that a moment ago, there you go. First stop, <laughs> CoreyKelly.com. There you go, Fernando. Check yeah. it out. We're awesome. super excited about Lift My Hands. Um, it was produced by Jeff Pardo, who was also, um, he won Producer of the Year, Dove Award this past year. And nice. he's worked with Ann Wilson, Katie Nicole, pretty much anybody on Christian radio. He's had some sort of hand in songwriting or producing. So like we mentioned about before, God will provide the tools and resources. Mm -hmm. You just believe. Yep. That's awesome. Well, ladies, it's been an absolute pleasure. I wish I could play your song, <laughs> but as we talked about before, sometimes the, the mm -hmm. rights and things will block us out. I don't want anyone to block this message at all. So please go to CoreyandKelly.com on Facebook and other places. You can find it. Spell out Corey and Kelly, C O R I and then K E L L Y. And uh, this broadcast will be up on YouTube in a few days. And hopefully, it'll send your iTunes and Spotify and all the other things that people, do, all the youths are listening to these days through the roof. So continue great success. I look forward to hearing uh, your music in the future as well. And I want to see something pop up in Florida or Georgia so I can get to and see myself. Yes. <laughs> well, thank, thank you both so much. Thank you.